Oh, the thunder rolls. Listen to little Garth Brooks. Love doing that at the cabin. But I am just kind of cruising through the woods right now. It's very pretty up here. Snow everywhere. Lakes over there. Um, but I just I had breakfast. I got my ice fishing stuff. Um, I'm gonna take it into the garage. I'm gonna pull everything out, set up the shack, make sure everything's, uh, you know, just working in improper order before I load up the sled and walk out onto the ice. I'll be drilling holes in the ice and checking the ice thickness uh, the whole way across the lake to where I'm gonna go fishing. That's about the safest thing to do. I have this thing called ice picks, which you wear them around your neck. And if you fall through, you know, you can take them apart and climb out of the ice. But from what I have heard, I've talked to probably five different bait shops, uh, a couple different local people that do a lot of ice fishing. There's more than enough ice out here. There's at least eight inches um, across like entire lakes. Even the big lakes are frozen. People are driving on them. So I'm not going to be driving on the lake. Um, there's just no need for me to. It's not a big lake. I don't have to like, drive halfway across it, which might be a mile or two. Um, but like I said, just pulled up to the garage. I'm gonna pull in here and make sure all my ice fishing stuff is in order. I got all of my ice stuffy. I got all of my ice fishing stuff um, out of the shed that we stored in. Here's my ice fishing setup. We have a clam portable um, heater, hammer to bust the ice. These are what you use to drill the holes. We have both a gas auger and manual auger, which you just use like a drill. All my fishing tackle, a tip up, a light that goes around the hole, shovel to shovel out the space uh, where this is going to sit, rod holder, hammer, like I said to break the ice, got an extra propane tank for the heater. Um, and that's pretty much what I go ice fishing with. I have, you know, four or five rods actually in this rod holder, but you keep them in there uh, so they don't get all messed up when you put them into storage for the summer. And here is my fishing rod case. Uh, the rods just strap in there. They're small, they're all rigged up and ready to go. I always like to retie the lines though after fishing line's been sitting for a year. All right, so that is everything loaded up. A rope right here that I can pull the sled with. And it does actually slide fairly well over snow and onto ice. So I'm gonna walk this down to the lake. I'll drill my first hole about five feet from shore, measure it with my tape measurer. And then about every 15 to 20 feet, yeah, I'll drill another hole all the way out to where I'm going and constantly, constantly checking the ice depth. These are my ice picks. Uh, they come apart. Huh? I almost poked myself in the face. And you use those uh, to claw at the ice as you're trying to pull yourself out. Because if you do go through the ice, uh, you can't really grab on ice or snow. You just there's nothing to grab so you take these picks You dig them into the ice you pull yourself out uh, You dolphin kick your feet together at the same time and you kind of wiggle out onto the ice and then you roll away from the hole uh, But I've never gone through um, I've known some people who have gone through because they just you know They didn't check the ice like they were supposed to they found a weak spot You know you never know there is no such thing as safe ice It's a saying in the ice fishing world, so you always want to be familiar uh, with the ice that you're going out, the water that you're going out, the lake, uh, you know, you stay away from uh, narrow inlets and outlets where there's flowing water underneath because uh, flowing water tends not to freeze as fast as standing water. But I think we're going to be okay today. You know, I, I checked with all the bait shops, which is what uh, the DNR in Wisconsin recommends you do. You know, go to the bait shop, ask them, they know, and uh, they'll tell you that, you know, it's pretty safe. People are going out and just, you know, but I always. You always check, you're always safe. So that's what we'll be doing first today. All right, so I will be drilling my first hole with uh, the ice, the gas powered ice auger here. Flip her on, run the choke, just give it a pull.
that right there is how you drill a hole in the ice for ice fishing with a gas powered auger. And first things first, take my tape measure here, clean off a spot next to the ice so I can find the edge, and then go down here and measure what the ice is. And it's about eight and a half inches, so I could actually bring a four wheeler out here, uh, Ranger ATV if I wanted to, to this part. But like I said, I'm gonna drill about five or six holes um, all the way out to my fishing spot so I can continually check the depth of the ice as I go. And here's what a uh, ice fishing hole looks like for all you people who have never seen one. I would take that scoop and scoop out all the ice in the hole you see right there. Um, I don't know if you can really see the depth of the ice on camera, but it's pretty deep right there. So moving on to the, another 20 feet, drill another hole. Drilled my second hole. Uh, the ice is still eight and a half inches thick out here. Um, the first one is kind of right there. It's about 100, 100 feet off from shore. Um, but this is kind of right where there's a deep drop off. You know, it gets really deep over here. So I just thought I'd check the edge of the drop off. Still eight to nine inches ice, it's fantastic. Um, you know, I'll drill three more holes before I get out there and keep checking because that's the safest thing to do. And one of the things is I'm up here by myself right now. Um, I, I might even use a life jacket if I wasn't told that the ice was eight inches thick. Eight inches is actually a lot of ice. But in hindsight, you know, I probably should have a life jacket. They're all in uh, the shed. But since I'm the only one up here, uh, you know, if something happens to me, I have to rely on myself and my own ability uh, to get myself out of trouble, you know, pull myself out of the ice, which I'm confident in doing. You know, if you read a lot of instructions and just practice and train a little bit for anything in life, you know, you, you will be able to follow through with whatever you train. So you, you constantly read literature on how to get yourself out of the ice, keep calm, don't panic, use your ice picks, you know, kick yourself out of the water. If there's two people with you, use a piece of rope. Uh, but like I said, there's eight inches of ice and there's very little chance at this point I think I'll actually go through. But just to be sure, I'm gonna keep drilling those holes, you know, every 100 feet to make sure that the ice is consistently safe all the way out there. All right, so I've drilled my next hole um, right here, and we're actually on about seven inches of ice. So we've lost just a little bit of ice thickness um, in the last 100 feet. Not a big deal, you know, four inches is what we need, five inches is what we need to have this set up out there, um, and two people, so more than enough ice. But I am gonna keep an eye on the next hole. I probably won't go quite as far uh, in between holes to drill the next one, just to make sure, you know, I'm not heading towards a thin spot of ice in the lake, you know, if it goes to six um, and then to five, you know, I'm starting to get into an area where there might not be that much ice. I don't think that's the case out here. Um, like I said, I think I just hit, you know, uh, a thin spot of ice but seven inches you know you could technically drive a small car in that if you really wanted to um, I, I wouldn't risk it but you could bring the ranger out here four-wheeler snowmobile anything like that and you're not gonna have an issue another indication uh, about the ice thickness is when I drilled that first hole you guys saw me drill it took me mm, you know 10 10, 12 seconds to actually drill the hole and get it in there. Um, and that's a good sign because you're actually having to go through ice. If you rip that bad boy out, uh, assuming you don't have a super powerful one like Tim Allen from Home Improvement, uh, 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 uh. but the longer it takes to drill the hole, the more ice there is. So it's a, you know, it's a slight indicator whether or not you're on very thin ice or relatively thick ice. But I'm gonna keep moving here. Not gonna go quite as far. Uh, my last hole's right there. Not gonna go quite as far for the next hole, um, but I'm about halfway out to my fishing spot and I'm feeling very confident. All right, so I made it. This is actually, the like camera lens, this is actually the hole that I'll be fishing out of. I'm gonna set my tripod up, got my hole set up. I'll pull it right here next to the hole, uh, get all the distance set up so the hole's in a reachable distance. I set my, I drilled about a half hole, set your auger in it so it's standing upright, not sitting on the cold snow. And uh, yeah, now I'm gonna set up my shack. And of course, these are zip-up doors. I've got them both open right now because I was just inspecting stuff. But uh, now I've got everything that I need. I'll put my bait probably right there where it's pretty handy right next to the beer, which is an essential if you're of age and you're going ice fishing. Got pretty much everything that I need though. Now I just need to secure the skirt of the actual house and you do that by just pulling it out like so but this is pretty heavy duty tarp this material that the ice fishing shack is made out of 
So you just take all this stuff and put it on right there. Try to pat it down with your foot just to seal the barrier. And then I go inside right here and I push out just a little bit. So I got a little extra room there. Put a little pressure on the barrier from the inside. Just like so. Just like that. And I've got this handy dandy rod right here. That unclip. Oh, whacked me in the face. Ow. <laughs> Oh, it's not smooth and that goes right across the top right there like that and that holds the entire top up There we go So that is my ice fishing setup got air pockets got windows Open those up zip close the doors Just like that Turn the heater on. And once you turn the heater on in here, I mean, it warms up, I'll be able to sit here uh, in my long underwear t-shirt and you know, I got my boots with the heated insoles in them. That's pretty sweet. But here's the final product. You know, you just uh, make sure that's all airtight. We got that set up over there. And there's my ice fishing setup. Just like that. Pretty simple, really neat. Uh, clams are awesome. I'm gonna get in there and turn the heater on and start catching some fish. And there she blows. She's zipped up, the heater's on. Uh, I'm gonna rig up my rods and some bait, have a beer, and hopefully catch some fish. So my first line is in the water. Holy crap, I'm already getting a bite. Oh, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. Something's on there just messing with it. Hopefully that goes down and I'll set the hook. Uh, the first line goes in the rod holder. Just got my minnow down to the bottom. Something's down there just messing with it. I think I'm gonna get a fish here. And oh yeah, oh, come on. I'm gonna drop a waxworm down the other hole when I get a second here. Hopefully there's a nice big crappie down there that's just gonna suck that minnow and I set the hook and reel them in there. All right, so I got my first fish. Uh, it's a little perch, not very big, not really big enough to eat. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put him back, but it's a pretty good sign that there's fish down there. I might move to a little deeper water. It's only about mm, 20 feet here. I'd like to be in maybe 30 feet because the fish will suspend themselves in that deep water. But here's the first fish. And you let the heater run on high for a few minutes and it'll push out just a bunch of heat. I actually keep this flap open uh, so I keep getting fresh air in here. I've got air vents, um, but you don't want to as asphyxiate yourself uh, just burning that propane in here nonstop. But uh, I am ready to go and hopefully we can start catching some fish. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for uh, watching this video, supporting me. I love sharing this stuff with you guys. So.